search exploration, all right? So that being said, let me say a few words about my own group. So we work on um, meta materials. So meaning we use this, uh, as you can see on the screen, those different patterns, geometries, or, you know, um, embedded resonators, inerters, uh, dashboard, you know, dampers, and all those uh, weird uh, periodic or aperiodic, sometimes quasi-crystalline, um, geometry or topology to create materials with properties that cannot uh, be achieved by conventional materials. So I myself, I graduated from National University of Singapore with bachelor degree, and I went to Harvard University for my uh, graduate study. And over the years, I also traveled the world and worked in different laboratories in different countries as shown here. So this is a very um, kind of a international oriented uh, group in the sense that we collaborate with uh, people uh, in the country and outside the country all the time. And our group mostly focus on design and simulation. So a lot of uh, simulation optimization and also, you know, some, a, a lot of times you have to use your imagination a lot as well for the uh, geometric or topological design. And um, um, we are not just doing this for fun. There are a lot of um, real world industrial applications uh, for those uh, acoustic and mechanical properties created by uh, geometric structures or architectural materials. For example, this is a frequency filter that actually exists in every single of your cell phone um, or that uh, basically use a mechanical property to filter out some noise in your uh, electrical signal. So that's still in use. And we can also create a waveguide to guide signal or energy, acoustic signal or acoustic energy into different, uh, to, towards different direction. We can use those things that we call phononic crystal that we created in our lab to do noise reduction for automobile, or we can do vibration isolation for uh, buildings and bridges or energy harvester uh, for vibration energy uh, collect collection. And uh, just like any, you know, technology, once you master it, you can use it to either uh, do good. That means you create acoustic scalpel to kill people, or you can use it to do bad. You can use um, th uh, things we call sound bullet to kill people. So basically you can either use it as a, as a weapon or as a something of um, medical uh, instrument. And we're also actively working with industrial partners, including Ross uh, Ross for jet engines and Amazon Robotics for um, kind of uh, soft robotic development. And the uh, Slumberger, which is a um, gas and oil company, gas and oil equipment company. So uh, for drilling and uh, all that um, application of uh, all those uh, technologies. And uh, just to give you a more concrete understanding. So those are some ongoing projects that are more in line with uh, so-called traditional mechanical engineering areas. We can do seismic mitigation materials in buildings and bridges and uh, urban noise reduction uh, devices and structures for say, you know, noisy um, city environment. And uh, we also have projects with aerospace vibration suppression. So, you know, ultra lightweight, self-adaptive smart material for uh, either airplanes uh, in the atmosphere or space programs, out, you know, going outside of the atmosphere. And, and um, so those applications actually we work on, they can span a wide range of frequency range, also a wide range of landscape. That's why our application area or research area actually traverse, uh, traverses a quite uh, large spectrum. And uh, this is the largest I ever seen. So basically around uh, Amsterdam airport, you can see this landscape structure that's helping, uh, that helps uh, shielding the local uh, community from the airplane noise. In the, air, um, in the airport, uh, around the airport. And also the smallest uh, landscape I've ever seen is basically this uh, sub-nanometer atomic arrangement. We can also work on for phonon kind of a uh, heat transfer uh, devices that will also be um, useful for thermal management as well. So this is our range. And uh, for now, we are also looking for students for even newer frontier. For example, we are looking for students 
<coughs> excuse me, to work on medical devices and also some machine learning algorithm or even quantum mechan uh, quantum computing algorithm. So not quantum mechanics, not the um, had hardware aspect of it, but we we'll focus on saying uh, how to use uh, quantum computer to solve real world engineering problem and things like that. So that's all about my own lab, and uh, we are looking for students who can, uh, who are either passionate about you know uh, geometric related mathematical theory like knot theory or uh, group theory, or a very physics oriented student or very application oriented student, and uh, with good coding uh, capability. So that's a overview about my own lab as well. So uh, please ask question if you have any and we can make it even a discussion as well. So I will answer question not only for my own lab, but also on behalf of all the labs I show you uh, that are actively looking for students right now. All right, so I see only one question in the chat. So Evan Harris asked if we are looking for students in micro nano scale or more general medical device. So. Uh, for my own group, I'm looking for one student in micro nanoscale that will be a cell um, microfluidic um, cell property identification project. So basically we use microfluidic devices and add vibration to it to um, analyze cell properties uh, on a single cell level. So that's very small scale, but we are also looking for more medical, uh, more general medical devices, just um, for example, the gastric device that uh, Dr. Kong just presented, we are also working on uh, designing that uh, and also simulation and optimization in collaboration with them. So Dr. Kong's lab is uh, focused on 3D printing and manufacturing fabrication, uh, the experimental part. So we are working on the uh, uh, simulation and design part. So that kind of thing will be pretty, how to say, macroscopic, meaning that uh, you will uh, have the size of probably your fist. So that's a macro scale project. And uh, uh, on top of those two, we are also looking uh, for collaborations in ultrasonic uh, devices. As you, you probably know, ultrasonic devices can be used uh, in medic, uh, for medical purposes in many, many different um, scenarios. So that's also within our expertise because we work on wave propagation and uh, architecture material. So we are going to use that uh, to create uh, new devices as well. So I hope that answer your question. Um, anybody has any other question I can try to answer? You can just shout out to me. You don't need to type things into chat. Hi, Dr. Ron, can you hear me? Yes. I was wondering, uh, yeah, I was wondering which of these labs is looking for thesis master students versus uh, PhD students, or is it so, kind of split? Yeah, so let me answer your first question first. Um, so you are asking about thesis master or and the difference between thesis master and direct PhD, right? So um, basically I think yeah. all the labs are looking for PhD students. Some of them will uh, admit some thesis master student if you are exceptionally good. For my lab, we can uh, accept uh, application and student uh, doing a master with a thesis, basically research-based master. Um, but each lab is different. So if you are, have um, you know particular interest in a particular lab, just uh, you know email that professor; they will tell you. All right. All right. Thanks. Do you have a second question? Um, no. I, I'm, 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 if you have any other information on Dr. Hockhalter's lab, that'd be great. Um, okay. Um, unfortunately, he's not online today, but uh, I we work with him very closely, and uh, he's right now focused very heavily on uh, machine learning um, kind of a simulation or or kind of a computational project. And uh, I'm pretty sure some of his projects are also involve some you know very how to say. Um, you know, tiny bit, a little bit of sensitive technology in the sense that uh, some of uh, their computational code are export controlled. So you need to be a US citizen to work on those uh, sensitive projects. But other than that, I think he has also a very, very wide range of interests. So you can, I strongly suggest that you just contact him directly, all right? 
Hey, thank you. Cool. Um, Evan, do you have a different question? Um, no, I don't at the moment. You answered it um, okay. fairly well. I... Cool. Anything anybody else wants to do or just curious about? Or anything you want me to elaborate a little bit more on? Okay, if not. Um, yeah, I had a question. If, if you're okay. open for questions and you had nothing else to, to cover, um, I just love to hear more just about how that, how the kind of life would work as a research student uh, in terms of just like when you would work, what type of atmospheres that'd be, if that'd be like something you'd be doing independently, um, say at like your house or your dorm or whatever, or if that's something you'd be doing in the lab with peers, like how does that look? So when we have research. office space and a lab space for um, each graduate student. So you will mostly be working in a lab um, if you are not against the idea, but we're also very flexible. So for example, during the pandemic, right? So all my students are working at home. That's also fine, but uh, for a lot of us, that's also a big challenge. You don't have this atmosphere, like, uh, you know, a tiny little bit of peer pressure. Maybe you need that or you need uh, something that you can, somewhere you can go to every day. So we, we have that. Uh, it's just right now, it's a little bit special, um, but you will be assigned an office space and also some lab space if you're, you are doing some, you know, uh, experimental work. And um, basically, usually the same group of people in, uh, working with the same professor sits together. You can also choose to sit with other group of people, you know, that might be more fun in terms of socially, uh, social interactions. And um, I guess other than that, um, usually you will have an uh, individual project that's, you know, that's gonna be your thesis. Um, doesn't matter if it's master's thesis or PhD thesis. So you will be in charge and you need to take ownership of what you are working on. But that doesn't mean that everything is independent. So for example, in my group, uh, uh, my students and postdoc, they work very collaboratively in the sense that maybe somebody knows something about, you know, doing this. And uh, I will just ask that person to teach the new graduate student how to do that. And uh, in the end, they can collaborate and uh, you know publish a paper together. So basically, you are in charge of a specific direction, specific thesis. But along the way, you are going to get help from a lot of people, and also going to need to help other people, like as a side project of yours. All right. So that's at least my way of organizing my group. Okay. Thanks. That was really helpful. Okay. So there's another question about uh, Dr. Owen Kingstad's lab. So that's high strain rate. So what they do is basically, if you heard about split Hopkinson, you know, bar and uh, also those gas guns. So th those will be what we mean by high strain rate. And his group is heavily focused on the experimental side. So as I showed in the slide, a lot of us are more on the computational side you know, uh, algorithm, simulation, optimization, design, and things like that. Uh, his group is uh, very experimental oriented. So if you are a very good experimentalist and uh, you have some experience, I think you you have a good chance with him. Just uh, email him and ask. Uh, if you are more on the computational side, then his group is, uh, is not, shouldn't be your top choice. You should reach out to other more computationally oriented uh, labs, All right? Okay, so let me pause for a minute and see if anybody has anything that um, you wish I could elaborate to you or explain to you or just more information you want in general. Um, if not, I will stop the meeting in one minute. So just let me know. I don't have any other questions, but thank you. All right. Thank you for attending this, and uh, hopefully I will see you soon.